If you are a space enthusiast, you may have heard about the Russian Luna 25 mission, which was supposed to be the first lunar landing by Russia in almost half a century. An enormous blow to Russia's space ambitions, the crash occurred when communication with the robotic spacecraft was interrupted. The interruption forced the mission to end in failure after the spacecraft spun out of control and crashed into the moon. But before we look at the most recent failure, let's take a look at some of Russia's previous attempts to conquer the cosmos. The history of Russia's space program could be traced back to the early 1950s, when the Soviet Union began developing rockets and missiles. In 1957, the Soviet Union launched Sputnik 1, the first artificial satellite to orbit Earth. This was a major achievement that stunned the world and put the Soviet Union ahead of the United States in the space race. In the following years, the Soviet Union continued to make significant advances in space exploration. In 1961, Yuri Gagarin became the first human to orbit Earth. In 1963, Valentina Tereshkova became the first woman in space. And in 1965, Alexei Leonov became the first person to perform a spacewalk. The Soviet Union also led the way in developing space stations. In 1971, the Salyut 1 space station was launched, followed by the Mir space station in 1986. Mir was the first modular space station, and it was inhabited by crews for over 15 years. The Soviet space program dissolved after the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991. However, the Russian space agency, also known as Roscosmos, was created to continue the country's space activities. Roscosmos has continued to launch spacecraft and conduct spacewalks. It's also a partner in the International Space Station. Today, Russia is still a major player in the space industry. It's developing new launch vehicles and spacecraft and is planning to send astronauts to the Moon and Mars. Russia's space program has made many significant contributions to space exploration and it's likely to continue playing a leading role in this field for years to come. Here are some of the major achievements of the Soviet space program. The first artificial satellite. The first animal in Earth orbit. First human in space. First woman in space. First spacewalk. First space station. First modular space station and partner in the International Space Station. Achieving such firsts was vital for the Soviet psyche because of the strength of the symbolism that they invoked. Indeed, the Soviet space program has had a profound impact on the world. It's inspired generations of scientists and engineers and has helped to advance our understanding of space. The program's achievements are a testament to the ingenuity and dedication of the people who worked on it. More recently, the Russian Luna 25 craft itself was an unmanned spacecraft that was supposed to land on the moon's south pole and collect geological samples. It was the first lunar mission by Russia in almost 50 years since the Soviet era. So here's what we know so far about what happened and why it matters. Luna 25 was an unmanned spacecraft that launched from Vostochny Cosmodrome in Far East Russia on August the 11th, 2023. It was part of the Luna Glob program, which aimed to explore the moon's surface and subsurface, especially near the South Pole, where scientists suspect that there could be frozen water and other valuable resources. The spacecraft weighed a modest 800 kilograms, and carried a suite of scientific instruments, including a camera, a spectrometer, a seismometer, a magnetometer, a laser altimeter, and a drill. It also had a radio beacon to communicate with Earth and other spacecraft orbiting the Moon. Although the mission was considered reasonably safe, it was designed to allow the Russian administration to proudly announce that they were back in the race for space. The mission itself had several objectives, which included demonstrating Russia's capability to land on the Moon after a long time studying the lunar environment and geology near the South Pole, testing new technologies for future lunar exploration and contributing to international scientific cooperation and data sharing. 
Luna 25 successfully entered the Moon's orbit on August the 18th after performing several orbital maneuvers. It was expected to make a soft landing on August the 21st or 22nd, depending on the optimal conditions. It would have been the first spacecraft ever to land on the Moon's South Pole, a feat that no other country had thus far achieved. However, something went wrong during the final phase of the descent. According to Roscosmos, Luna 25 encountered a problem as it moved into its pre-landing orbit, which caused it to spin out of control and crash into the lunar surface. The exact cause of the problem is still under investigation, but some experts have suggested that it could be related to the flight control system or the engine malfunction. Roscosmos announced that it had lost contact with Luna 25 shortly after 11.57 Greenwich Mean Time on August the 21st. Preliminary findings showed that the spacecraft had ceased to exist as a result of a collision with the surface of the Moon. A special commission has been formed to look into why the mission failed. The loss of Luna 25 is a major blow to Russia's space program, which has been struggling for years with budget cuts, technical issues, corruption scandals and international sanctions. Russia was once a leader in space exploration, but has since fallen behind other countries like China and the US, which have more ambitious plans for the Moon and beyond. Indeed, the Luna 25 mission in particular was also a personal disappointment for Mikhail Marov, a 90-year-old scientist who worked on the Soviet lunar missions and who was rushed to hospital after hearing the news. Luna 25 was supposed to be a milestone for Russia's lunar ambitions, as well as a precursor for more advanced missions in the future. For example, Luna 26 and Luna 27 are planned to orbit and land on the Moon respectively in 2025 and 2026, carrying more sophisticated instruments and even a rover. Luna 28 is envisioned to return lunar samples to Earth in 2027. The failure of Luna 25 also means that Russia has missed an opportunity to be the first to explore the Moon's South Pole, which is considered a potential hotspot for scientific discoveries and human colonization. The South Pole is of interest because it has regions that are permanently shadowed from sunlight, creating extremely cold temperatures that could preserve water, ice and other volatile substances. These could be used as sources of water, oxygen and fuel for future missions. Russia was not alone in its quest for the South Pole. India's Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft has since landed on the South Pole and is currently sending a rover to explore the rocks and craters. China also plans to send its Chang-6 mission to collect samples from there in 2024. The US has announced its Artemis program, which aims to land astronauts on the South Pole by 2028. However, unlike these upcoming expeditions, the Luna 25 mission is no signal for a new golden era of exploration for Russia. Instead, now it may be seen as the last attempt by the modern Russian state under President Vladimir Putin to revive the glory of the Soviet-era space program. The crash of Luna 25 is a sad reminder of how difficult and risky space exploration is. It's also a setback for Russia's own space program, which has been trying to regain its former glory and prestige. However, it is not the end of Russia's lunar dreams. Roscosmos has vowed to continue its efforts and learn from its mistakes. It's also expressed its willingness to cooperate with other countries in exploring the moon. The Moon remains an enticing destination for many nations and organizations as it offers scientific insights, economic opportunities and strategic advances. And although India's Chandrayaan-3 has become the first to land at the lunar south pole, the race is not over yet. It will be interesting to see who will succeed in reaching this uncharted territory and what they will find there. Once again, thanks for joining us at the Global Insight to watch this video. If you've enjoyed it, let us know by liking and sharing it. For more great videos, follow our channel, The Global Insight. Just click subscribe. Thanks again, and until next time, stay tuned.